In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Quick Engrave toolpath while using some specialist tools which are spring-loaded so that we can engrave over uneven surfaces. We'll also take a look at drawbacks of not being able to specify exact cutting depths and then ways in which we can encourage more cutting depth by applying more pressure to the tool. So this is where we're heading, but let's have a look at creating our own file. So let's go up to File and Close. We're not going to save those changes. I'm going to come to Open an Existing File. And the file that we want in this case is a quick engraving vector drawing file. So let's open that up, double clicking it. And this is going to open up our vectors to create our quick engrave toolpath. In the bottom left here, you can see the job dimension. So we've got 8 inches by 5 inches with a 0.1 inch uh, depth for our material. Now, these are all just standard text. And if you want to know how to enter text into the software, we do have a dedicated video on how to uh, create text. But for now, we're going to look at toolpath. So let's hop over to our toolpath menu. So we click on the top left here to switch over to our toolpath menu. And we're going to have a look at our material setup. So we're going to click on set. And in our material setup menu, you can see we've got the active sheet. We've got the thickness, which is 0.1, as I referred to earlier. Uh, XY datum is in the bottom left, because that is where it's situated on my machine. So in your case, do double check where the XY datum needs to be set for your machine. Um, in this case, I'm zeroing off the material surface. The rapid Z gaps above material for my clearance is 0.25 and my plunge is 0.25, which again is safe settings for my machine. So in this case, double check these settings for your machine because they will no doubt be different. So make sure they're uh, ready and safe for your particular setup. And the same applies for my Z gap above material, but I'm happy with that. Let's click OK and let's have a look at the quick engrave toolpath. So it is located at the top right here of the software. And if we click on the quick engrave toolpath, you'll notice we've got a set of options we can have a look at. So let's have a look at this in depth. Now, while it is similar to some of our other toolpath forms, you'll notice that the option here to uh, save a toolpath in this actual form. So you can have the option to output the toolpath directly to a toolpath file instead of having to go to the toolpath saving option on the toolpath menu. So this is designed for producing small, quick pieces of work uh, using only this form uh, to be as optimal as possible. But you can, of course, still create toolpaths as normal and save them out separately using the so uh, save toolpath uh, option on the toolpath panel. Now at the top here, you've got the selection of tool or you can edit the tool like our other toolpaths. Uh, so you can select whichever tool you need. In this case, I'm using the diamond drag here. Uh, but you can see here we don't have a depth field in terms of a cut depth like the other toolpath forms. Instead, we have a depth slash pressure field. Now, this is because we're using an engraving uh, bit with a spring-loaded tool, and it's the actual depth or pressure that you're going to be pushing the bit into the material rather than the actual depth of cut. So I'll explain a little bit more about this later on. Uh, next, though, we have the option to cut an outline or fill. And what this means is the outline will simply trace the vectors that you've selected allowing the bit to drag its tip along the center point of each of these lines. Whereas the fill will do the same outline, however, then we'll draw hatch lines across the internal sections of each of these vectors. Uh, and we can then choose to step over how densely the lines are placed. And the smaller the value, the more dense the lines uh, will be. And then you notice here we have the option to choose the type of fill it's going to do. So you have offset or hatch. Now with offset, which you can see in this example drawing here, uh, it starts drawing lines going in one step at a time until it reaches a center point. Or you can choose to have it set to a hatch, uh, in which case it will draw straight lines at a given angle, which you can specify here, uh, filling up the internal area. And then you can also use, uh, you can also choose to make it a cross hatch. So we'll do that at one angle and then 90 degrees perpendicular to that given angle. So in this case, if I check the cross hatch option, in this case, it would be uh, vertical lines with a 90 degree horizontal line for the cross hatch. Now, then we can choose to designate if this is a toolpath that uses a nose cone, which again, I'll get into later. And then just like our other toolpaths, you can choose to have the uh, vector selector uh, to automatically select uh, vectors on given layers. And then, of course, you can give the toolpath a name if you would like to uh, for this particular project, so help you organize it for yourself. And then we have the normal options to calculate and close out the form. So this covers the form in general, but we'll go over some more details uh, in later in the video. But with that now covered, let's have a look at creating an example of a quick and groove toolpath. So uh, we need to select our text first. We can left mouse click and you can drag a selection box over the text or click on the worksheet and press Control A on the keyboard and this will select all of our text as well. So the first thing we're going to do is select our tool at the top here. So we'll click on Select. 
And the section of the tool database I'm interested in is actually this section here, the engraving and specialist tools section. I'm using my diamond drag, which you can see is named up here. And you can see the tool type is up here, the units, the diameter, so eighth of an inch, my included angle. And then we have the line width and step over. Now, unlike our other tools, it does not have a pass depth. And the reason for that is that the diamond drag tools often come with uh, a spring loaded. So they are able to be run over uneven surfaces. But this does mean that we're not able to force the tool down to a specific depth. Because it's going to be controlled by the amount of pressure that we can apply to the tool and how much compression is in that spring at that moment in time. However, there is a way to encourage uh, more depth and we'll go over that shortly. But for now, we have the options for our diameter, the angle, line width and step over. I'm happy with these settings. So I'm going to click select to make sure that is my selected tool. So let's now have a look at the depth and pressure. So a way that we can control or encourage uh, more depth in using a spring loaded tool is by using the pressure depth option, as you can see at the top here. This allows us to specify uh, depth, which we're going to place into the spring loaded tool to then encourage more compression in that spring loaded tool, which will then force the tool or at least increase the pressure on the surface that we're going to be cutting or engraving on. Uh, so with that tool, so with that selected in this particular example, we're going to go for the value of 0 0.1 inches. Uh, for the tool pressure and this will take the tool down to 0.1 of an inch in the z-axis and it will increase the pressure on the tip of the tool uh, and we'll use the strategy outline for this one uh, we'll make sure our vectors are selected and then we'll click calculate so you can see the software has opened up us into the preview menu so we can click on preview selected toolpath and you can see the tool went around but you can't quite make all these details so let's have a look at changing the material and some other options in this form. So the material we can change to something like bronze because let's say you're engraving on something that is like copper or bronze. Uh, and then we, what we can do is also use this option here for the toolpath color to see uh, where the engraving has gone through. Now it's still not quite shown up correctly. So let's go up to the toolpath menu and let's go to preview simulation quality, go to maximum, and then let's reset the preview and then we'll preview that selected toolpath and you can already see how much more detail you see. It's much more clear. You can see the outline very clear now, nice and easy to spot. And you can see how the uh, toolpath color really aids in the visual here of helping you see that toolpath. Because of course, quick engravings can be quite a fine toolpath. So anything you can do to aid seeing it in your preview will help you because this is effectively what you'll be seeing uh, on your machine when you finally come to cut it. So it's, so it's always good to double check your preview and, and play with these options. But for now, let's reset our view control, reset our preview, and just close out the preview form because we're going to go back into the Quick and Grave toolpath to have a look at another example. And you can see in the 3D view now, my vectors are visible. So uh, you can see in the software that in the 3D view, as well as the 2D view, you can see your vectors nice and clearly, and they're already selected for us. So let's go back into that Quick and Grave menu and let's have a look at some further options. So let's look at creating a fill option in this case and what we're going to set it to is offset and we're just going to click calculate and have a look at what that looks like now you can see that it's offset these and if we just zoom in a little bit on the 3d view you can see the path that the lines are taking so you can see where the tool will be going around uh, with the offset option so each one of these lines will be a path that the tool will be taking now if we zoom back out again we can click on top on the view control over here uh, we can go over to the quick engrave menu again so if we double click on the engraving toolpath to open it back up click on hatch and we're going to click calculate and let's have a look at what this looks like now you can see what the toolpath is doing here is it's done uh, the hatch fill but it's done it with horizontal lines now if i go back into the form and i set this to a 45 degree angle click calculate You'll now notice the lines have changed to that 45 degree angle. And then similarly, if I go back in and choose a crosshatch, click calculate, you'll notice we have the crosshatch effect there. And then finally, if we go back into the quick and grave menu, we can have a look at changing the step over. So if I go for something um, a little bit larger to show the effect of this, if, I've, if I go for a step over of 0 0.1, for, for example, click calculate, You'll notice how much uh, larger the step over is with that cross hatch. So you can see here uh, that the hatch now is much larger. The gaps between each one is much larger. So it gives you some flexibility over your uh, tool pass. 
Now let's just go to our view control, let's have a look at the preview for it. And you can see that cross hatch effect. And now at this point it's good to point out that because we're using a spring loader tool here, the actual depth that you're going to be seeing in your previews may not represent what you're going to see in your final parts that you're going to be cutting because it all depends on how stiff the spring you're using is in your spring loaded diamond drag tool and the density of the material that you're going to be using and how this all works together to give you your final result. So if you are working with some new material, do make some test cuts before you start working on a full project uh, with that material to establish the correct values that you're going to want to uh, use to get the results that you're looking for in your designs. But for now, let's uh, use our view control to pop the view back on top again and we're going to go back into the Crick and Grave menu and we're going to have a look at the uh, nose cone option here. Now with the nose cone option it works in a similar fashion to a spring loaded tool in the sense that it is able to freely move and engrave over uneven surfaces except the nose cone has a tool at a fixed depth below where it detects the surface of the material which means we can engrave at a fixed depth whether we are using flat or an even material and therefore it improves the depth consistency of your final toolpath uh, when using the nose cone. Though we do have to specify some additional data here for it to be able to work properly and we're going to input the depth which the tool is protruding from the nose cone which in my case uh, it will be uh, 0.02 inches and then we want to specify the number of passes it's going to attempt to get our depth of cut in which case we'll set this to three and then when I kick, uh, click calculate you'll see in 3D view here if I just use my right mouse click to tilt the view if I just zoom in just a little bit you can see that we have the three overlapping lines cutting it down into the material and if I simulate this you'll see we still have our incredibly fine engraving detail now we're going to go back into the quick engrave menu. I'm just going to click on the top option on the view control. And we're going to have a look at this section here for machine and post processor. So over here we have the option for desktop or large machine. I'm using my desktop machine in this case. And you can see I've got a post processor selected here, which is the G-code engraving um, post processor. Now this is important to, to note down because we're using a diamond drag bit. We want to make sure that the spindle is not on uh, when we're using this toolpath on the machine. So in this case, this post processor is specially designed to never turn on the spindle of the machine. And just important to keep that in mind because you don't want to run a regular post processor for this toolpath because this is specifically an, an engraving toolpath. So you don't need the spindle to be on. With that said, I'm going to name my toolpath to quick engrave hatch. I have my vector selected and I can click save toolpath because I've got my post processor selected. And then we can save it to a location here. I'm just going to click save, overwrite my old file, and that is my toolpath saved for use on the machine. Now if you look further down the form here, you can see there's the option here to add side to uh, toolpath name. And that this is when we're doing a double-sided project and it will automatically add the prefix of top or bottom onto your toolpath name to help identify which side is to be cut on. And lastly, we've also got the option to output direct to machine. And this is for compatible CNC machines to output directly from the software into the machine's controller ready to run to save you having to manually do that step yourself. However, this only works for machines that are specially designed with this compatible feature in mind. And at this moment, not many machines unfortunately support uh, this option. So if this option is grayed out for your post processor, then this means that the post processor cannot um, do the direct output. And so the standard method of saving toolpaths uh, would need to be used where you save your toolpath and then take it to the machine and then run it uh, when it's ready. So in order to show you how to do that, we would, if we were doing it the manual way, we would literally just click calculate and then we'd go to close out our preview and then we go to the save toolpath form and here we could save our toolpath as usual. So we can use this form to save our toolpath out and then we can take it to the machine. But with that, let's click save toolpath. I'll call this one quick engrave manual. And that concludes our guide on how to use the quick engrave toolpath. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.